truly believe that one of the most underused features inside of ChatGPT is the ability to stack GPTs one right after the other. So I'm gonna use this as a demo to do two things. I'm going to use this video to one, build a GPT. And the second thing is that I'm gonna show you how to call them in a stack. So first you're gonna to go to chatgpt.com. This is the page you'll see. Because I don't wanna share my historical information or other GPTs that my team has built, you can do one of two things. Either you can open this sidebar and hit GPTs, explore GPTs, and then build a new GPT. Or you can hit this top right button, expand it, explore GPTs, build a new GPT. Once you hit that button, you will then be taken to this page. This is the blank GPT page, and there are two ways to actually build a GPT. First, it's gonna tell you that it's in draft mode. I haven't actually created anything, haven't saved it. This is still grayed out, right? No name, no description, nothing. The left-hand side is the creation zone. The right-hand side is the testing zone. So left-hand creation, right-hand preview testing. There are two ways to build the GPT. I am going to show you one step in create, and then the rest I'll do and configure for the most part. If you are a super beginner and you've never built a GPT, I would probably just start with create. Uh, and if this is your like fifth, just go into configure and just prompt like an all-star. So if you go into create, it's kind of going to take you through a conversational, uh, just it's going to take you through a chat and it'll ask you the questions that it is using the answer to, to then update this actual configuration page to make your GPT, to describe the GPT, to name it, to come up with a profile photo, to do instructions, all this stuff so that you actually don't have to do any of the prompting. So, hi, I'll help you build a new GPT. You can say something like make a blah, blah, blah. What would you like to make? I want a. Now, a lot of people will use GPTs for things like write me Instagram captions or write me a newsletter or something where you have to access like a set of documents. So like an employee handbook, GPT. I want more people to think of stupid, annoying things that they constantly have to do that right now you are doing manually. And I'm gonna give you one of those. When I'm writing really long pieces, which I do all the time for my work, I find myself getting writer's block in the middle of writing something long. So I'll be writing a whole paragraph and then I'll like, I can't come up with a word and I'll just mull over it and I'll just be like, oh my God, I need a thesaurus right now. I need a perfect synonym for happy, right? Or else I'm gonna lose my mind. I used to like call my sister and, and describe the word because she was the only person that could get in my head. Now ChatGPT can get in my head. So I want a GPT to fill in the blank for me when I write something. I'm kind of purposely making this bad so that it just starts the configuration, but it doesn't overwhelm because I'm gonna rewrite it anyways. What about calling this fill in the thought? Love it incredible and so you just saw it all of a sudden started creating the little description of my gpt i didn't write this chat gpt wrote this completes your writing by filling in the blank naturally and intelligently and it came up with some of these conversation starters the conversation starters you honestly don't need unless you're building a public gpt most people aren't the gpt marketplace was a huge failure haven't heard of anyone making money off of it like they had promised but GPTs for yourself, very valuable. So here's the profile picture for fill in the thought, a warm hand drawn, make it more simple. You can go back and forth, you can prompt, but as we are creating, I'm just gonna switch over after this is done to the configuration page. So you can see it's kind of this toggling so that you didn't have to do, again, prompting from scratch. So here's a simplified version, looks, fabulous so i could go back and forth with it it could ask me more questions but so i'm kind of locking in that profile photo now you can see that it is done over here and it wants to now ask me a bunch of questions and i'm not going to do that so it has created a name created a description done this whole thing in in instructions but i want it to behave in a really specific way 
I want it. Let me just read what it what it gave me so far. This GPT helps users complete or expand upon their written thoughts in terms of the context and tone, offers blood, should be creative and relevant, it can handle anything, blah, and may offer multiple variations if appropriate. You will see why I am deleting this. It assumes the user's intent and doesn't wait for exact instructions in a clear pattern's present. Fine. What's your explaining? Responds directly. Should prioritize if a sentence could end. Uh, and I'm going to boop, not do that. When a user types in XXX or XYZ or ABC, I do those all the time, that should be read as a blank and should be replaced with the, like, <laughs> see, this is why, this is why I need the blank. And should be replaced with a smart completion. Honestly, you don't have to prompt at all. When a user types a phrase inside of angled brackets, you should also treat that as a blank that you have to complete. But, okay, big, 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 but you should treat the information, I'll fix it later, inside the angled brackets as a hint for what the author is really looking for. Then, what I'm gonna do, and honestly, I literally use this GPT in, in my life, so this is me just rebuilding something. Then, you will generate a list of all of the blanks that you filled in. You will generate a numbered list of all the banks you filled in. If a user responds with any of the numbers, that means that the author wants more options for that specific blank. If a user replies two, that means only generate more options for the second blank. If a user respond to four, that means generate more responses for options to for blanks two and four. It is helpful when you kind of assign a word to a thing to continue using that word. So that specific blank, if a user do that for that blank, da 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 blank, because that is how it's mapping all these vectors. So using your same word and repeating does help. If user responds to four da 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 keep going until the author is happy then generate the final version of the post what this essentially what of the of the text what this essentially is is mad libs right that's just how i end up writing and so what you didn't see in the back because i wasn't uh, calling attention to it is that it was updating its brain you could kind of see that this create button was loading so if i said ah uh, you gonna do it there okay so you saw that it gave the little updating wheel so whenever you see the create button be in black just as it is right now that means that you are ready and i could hit create what i'm going to do right now is just test it and say i love all holidays but my favorite is xxx and that is way better than a holiday that's like Thanksgiving but without the turkey and less family bites on that holiday which will be the XX or like um, for every holiday I like to pop a bottle of brand of champagne Champagne. We're just gonna see how this works. Uh, three, two, one. So I am again just kind of testing it in here. Maybe I don't like that it's bolded, and so I can go back and say, "Hey, don't bold anything. Just tell me what's happening." I love all holidays, but my favorite is da da da. Way better than Friendsgiving, where the vibes are chill and no one's blah blah blah. And I like to pop a bottle of Boba Fico. I don't like uh, New Year's Eve. So we're gonna replace that one. Perfect. And let's do Diwali. And so now it'll give me that whole updated thing. Cool. Okay. 
we are going to update it, share it, lock it in, and view GPT. So now I am talking to that GPT. I could continue with this. What I'm actually going to do though, is do a brand new chat with just chat GPT, right? So if I had created this GPT 16 weeks ago and I'm coming into chatgpt.com, I could see this. This is just blank, blank, home screen. Everyone's used to this. What can I help you with? If I want to talk to that fill in the thoughts GPT, I can just at fill in the thoughts, thought singular. And now I am only talking to that GPT. It is as if I spun up a new conversation thread with fill in the thought. Or I can just keep adding all these GPTs. So um, I think we need a new newsletter. My last one was about the four potential paths of AGI and how to prepare. My next one is about AI agents and we need something like maybe multi modality but updated for 2025. I feel like we should focus on, you know, name a big AI lab here. Obviously I wouldn't write something like this because I know what I want to write a newsletter about, but this will just be an example. So I think we need a newsletter, my last one, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna do that same thing that we did before where it's gonna kind of do the blanks. And let's say, uh, we don't like option one. Let's jam on the first idea. Um, uh, let's, implications for users is nice. Implications, please. Okay. Oh, what the heck? Okay, could have been a little bit more explicit. Perfect, do this for the topic, finish the uh, text. And so hopefully, great. Um, so that post or, or email or whatever it is, is now done. What I am now going to do is call in the same chat thread, a second GPT. So I could have, first of all, I could have been writing 18 paragraphs and done these blanks and gone through this and come out with an entire newsletter. I could have written a poem. It doesn't really matter what the format is. I am now going to call a totally separate GPT. And we're going to do email mimic alley. This is a GPT that's just been given a couple examples of the types of emails that I write friends. Um, so I'm going to say, rewrite this. I don't have to go out of my way and be like, take this post and put it in the voice of alley based on the examples that you have in your prompt. I don't have to do that because that's what a GPT is doing for me. So my team, we do a ton of these stack GPTs because we can just call them back to back to back to back. You can have some for writing style. You can have some <clears throat> for brainstorming help, some for uh, turn this into a newsletter, turn this into a tweet, turn this into an Instagram caption, whatever, because GPTs perform better when they're focused on one thing. So splitting it up and calling them in a row, it's kind of like creating your own little like agentic flow, not really, but that's a helpful way of thinking about it in 2025. Cool, rewrite this. So I am now talking to email mimic Allie. You can see that it like got a little more casual. So instead of, I think we need a newsletter, I think it's time for a new newsletter. Um, I, after that, I'm feeling pulled towards something. Feels like the right moment to anchor it around. I guess I write like a, <laughs> like a, like this kind of person, sure, uh, perfect. Okay, so I could then turn this into a tweet of this or that. I think I even have like a newsletter headline or something, newsletter subject line. Uh, write 10 options for this. I'm just gonna say write 10 options for this. Um, cool. You know, like I could have prompted it with more. Obviously, it's easier to write a subject line when it has an entire newsletter and it's not just basing it off of one title. But yeah, I think it did fine. Um, you can imagine that you can stack a ton of these in a row. Um, it is very, very, very helpful for tone of voice and editing. 
I know tons of people who have like one GPT for helping them get their idea done, kind of like that fill in the thoughts. Another one for put this in my voice. Another one for like edit this for, you know, likelihood of going viral or whatever. But you can do all these in a stack. So it's as if you have three editors in front of you and the first editor is really good at X, the next editor is really good at Y and you're using them in concert with one another. It's pretty fun. So I hope that that helps. That was, again, a tutorial on how to build a GPT and how to call them in a stack just by using that at sign, just like you would in Slack or in Google Docs or anything like that. I um, hope this is a fun one and may all of you create the GPT of your dreams. Bye guys.